This is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, call the more that was lost or taken from Louisiana's poor, want. the harder they clutched what fed their hopes. So many of the, of the people who lived on the, uh, the, the, the earth had um, nothing else but to believe in, in, in religion. Uh, they sure they had no money. Not after uh, working all year, they had no money in the bank, anything like that. So God was the only thing that they did have. Whether in cities or rural communities, in homesteads or former slave quarters, many people found comfort and solace in the world of the spirit. The church was in the, right in the center of the quarters, and no matter where you were in the quarters where you lived, you could hear the singing, and you could hear the preaching and the praying. In the years following the Civil War, Louisiana endured some of the darkest moments of her history, and yet, paradoxically, out of that darkness, shown some of the most brilliant and beautiful expressions of her people's creativity. Louisiana, following Reconstruction, was really in a time of incredible artistic ferment. It, it seemed that practically everyone who wasn't painting was writing or who wasn't writing was painting. Suddenly, the landscape makes it onto canvas. I think it's partly that people in, at that point saw landscape as actually beautiful, as something to like, as something picturesque, something you'd like to look at in your house. Painter Richard Clegg, a native of the state, was among the most noteworthy of the new landscape painters. Louisiana's natural beauty, as well as her commercial advantages, were given an international showcase in 1884 when New Orleans hosted the World's Industrial and Cotton Exposition. Although it failed to turn a profit, the fair proved to be a spectacular cultural triumph, exposing local writers and artists to a national audience. Among the millions of visitors drawn to the exposition from around the globe were two brothers from New England. Ellsworth and William Woodward both looked at New Orleans, at Louisiana, at the Gulf Coast, at their larger environment, with very new eyes. And they started to see beauty in things that really were not widely painted before. The Woodward brothers moved here and founded the Newcomb School of Art, an important mainstay of the arts and crafts movement. Today, Newcomb Pottery is prized throughout the world for its beauty and craftsmanship. The most famous artist working in New Orleans during this period came to spend time with his Creole cousins. I think the work that Degas did here in his 1872 visit is some of his best. Just as the beauty of Louisiana had fixed the gaze of painters and potters, Writers were inspired to sketch the region's colorful characters. The mix of races and cultures, spirituality and sensuality. It was all an irresistible attraction to literary figures like Mark Twain, Lafcadio O'Hearn, and Kate Chopin. Some of the writers best suited to capturing the subtler shades of local color were natives such as Grace King, Alice Dunbar Nelson, and George Washington Cable. Almost a century after joining the United States, Louisiana still seemed like a foreign, faraway place to readers, and her people, the most exotic of Americans. Then, just as now, people came to New Orleans to soak in the sounds of America's most musical city. New Orleans had just about every type of music imaginable, uh, from opera, classical, uh, European classical music, uh, ethnic folk musics of all types, uh, Africanized uh, drumming, singing, and chanting, African-American folk music. And there were also brass bands that were very popular from the uh, French colonial days. 
In turn-of-the-century New Orleans, those varied traditions and styles combined to create something entirely new, something that could only have happened in that place and at that time, the birth of jazz. New Orleans had such a fertile climate for the development of jazz. It historically had the right combination of spirit, a history of celebration, and obsession with dancing, and a blend or combination of all different types of music. Careless of the laws and conventions of the times, jazz transcended the disparities of race and culture by merging those differences into something that was neither wholly black nor white, European nor African. What jazz musicians did was they found out that they could give the music new life, freedom, which is what the people were really looking for that created the music, a way of, of making the music more personal and using that personalized sound in unison with others who were also adding their own improvised personalized sounds to the music. So instead of just playing the music was loosened up and could be done like this. Musicians and audiences looking for that new freedom and loosened up style of music, usually found it in a part of the city called Storyville, a colorful neighborhood of whorehouses and juke joints where prostitution and gambling were legal. After the United States entered World War I in 1917, the Navy shut Storyville down. Apparently, for soldiers going off to face the horrors of war, the shady side of New Orleans was just a little too dangerous to their health and morals. But the spirit of Storyville survives in unnumbered musical geniuses. Buddy Bolden, Jelly Roll Morton, Kid Ory, and King Oliver. There was one, however, who became known the world over. For all intents and purposes, Louis Armstrong is number one. I mean, with whatever jazz you hear today is directly due to the contribution of Louis Armstrong. The most distinctly American art form, jazz brought together and blended all that was best about the different peoples of Louisiana and at a time when they were otherwise most divided. The Night Comet in which we take no note of time and forget that we are living in a practical age, which mostly relegates romance to printed pages and merriment to the state. And the glorious night is approaching, this quaint old time night, star jewel, fantastically robed, and the blue river is bearing us fleets of white boats thronged with strangers who will dance the dance of the carnival until blue day puts out at once the trembling tapers of the stars and lights of the great ball. Throughout Louisiana's long history, and even in the hard years following the Civil War, nothing has ever managed to dampen the spirit of celebration that has made this people unlike any other Americans. But in the early days of the new century, 
that joie de vivre would be tested. Steady rain 